This video will be a continuation in our series on the spinal cord and this video is going to cover our motor or our descending pathways in general. Here we see our motor homunculus. Remember our motor homunculus is located in our precentral gyrus in our frontal lobe and we call this whole area our somatomotor cortex or our primary motor cortex. And just like we saw in our sensory homunculus, the amount of area covered by our body feature is going to indicate the number of upper motor neurons located to control that area of your body. So here we see a ton of area dedicated to the hand and fingers, meaning we have tons of upper motor neurons in this area that control our hand. So the larger the area, the more dexterity in motion you possess. So we have a lot of dexterity in our hand, but we don't have a lot of dexterity in our trunk, which means we're not going to be making very fine movements with our trunk. Our motor pathways or our descending pathways are a little bit more simple than our sensory pathways. We begin with an upper motor neuron whose cell body is in our somatomotor cortex here. Let's say we're going to move our elbow. Okay, so here's our cell body. This cell body is going to stay in our upper motor cortex, but we send an axon down through our spinal cord to synapse to a lower motor neuron. The cell body of our lower motor neuron is going to be in our anterior gray horn. And then this lower motor neuron will send an axon to synapse to our muscle. So in previous lectures, we've talked about motor neurons in our motor units. The motor neuron in our motor unit is a lower motor neuron. So here we see a picture of our spinal cord. And remember, our anterior gray horn is going to be this guy here. And this does somatic motor. So our cell bodies of our lower motor neurons are going to be in our anterior gray horn. And then we send our axons over our ventral root to our spinal nerve to be distributed to our skeletal muscles. Also in this picture we can see different areas where we have our descending pathways. So we are going to talk about corticospinal tracts which we see here. We are going to talk about tectospinal tracts which we see here. We are going to talk about reticulospinal tracts, which we see here. Then our vestibulospinal tract is there. So let's start with our corticospinal tracts. You can see we have two of them. We have a lateral corticospinal tract and we have an anterior corticospinal tract. As we discuss our descending pathways, we're not going to carry modalities, we are going to carry muscle commands. So in our corticospinal tracts, we are going to carry commands for finely coordinated limb movements. So we begin with our upper motor neuron, and our upper motor neuron is going to be located in our somatomotor cortex. And then our upper motor neuron axons are going to come down. And about 85% of these axons are going to decussate at the level of our medulla.
Those axons are going to follow our lateral corticospinal tract. So 85% of our axons decussate in our medulla oblongata. This creates a structure called the medullary pyramids or protrusions on the anterior side of the medulla. The remaining 15% of our axons are still going to have their upper motor neurons located in the somatomotor cortex. Their axons come down, all the way down our spinal cord, and then they decussate at the level of exit, which is where our lower motor neuron is located. So then our lower motor neuron, located in our anterior gray horn, is going to leave through the ventral root and go to our skeletal muscles. So that is a little bit simpler than our sensory pathways. And here again, we have a nice table summarizing what's going on. We just talked about our anterior and lateral corticospinal tracts which are going to control our limbs, but our corticobulbar tracts follow the same pathway, except they are going to do muscle control of head and neck through our cranial nerves. So if you ever see corticobulbar tracts, you should think cranial nerves. Our corticospinal tracts are going to do our skeletal muscles. If you have any questions, never hesitate to contact your instructor.